and long lasts nearly seven months after the previous full release. OBS version 24 is here, and it's got some really standout features that people have been requesting for a long time, and I honestly didn't expect to happen this year. It's not a big revolutionary update. There's no new encoder or things like that, but there's quite a bit packed in here. And like I said, one of these features you guys are gonna like a lot. So let's, du let's dump in. Let's not dump in. Let's jump in after a word from this video sponsor. <laughs> The Mod Mic Wireless can boldly go where no mic has gone before. This microphone can attach to any headphones, requires no additional wires, features very low latency, a dual capsule microphone, 12 hour battery life, and LED indicators on the receiver so you know when you're muted and or when the battery is running low. And you can basically run your entire house without ever losing a signal. What more could you ask for? Learn more by clicking the link in the video description. So I'm just gonna start with the biggest feature that has been requested for a long time, and honestly, I thought was a little silly, but it had enough requests that they finally prioritized it and implemented it here in OBS version 24, and that is the ability to pause recordings. You can now finally set up and pause your recording instead of hitting stop or instead of having to cut chunks out of your video. So if you're recording something and you need to, you know, not have something included in the video, you can hit pause, either by clicking or setting up a hotkey and then hit resume and it will continue recording from that point, leaving out whatever was in between it. Now this only works if you have custom recording settings set up. So if you have your recording set to use stream encoder, which means that it's just using whatever the stream settings are at, it cannot do this because the, you know, it's only running one encoder in that instance if you're recording and streaming while live. But if you're recording with just recording settings and not tied to a stream profile, then you're good to go and pause recording is finally here. Personally, I think it makes way more sense for a plethora of reasons to just edit your videos, <laughs> but this is, like I said, been a much requested feature and it's pretty cool to see it finally implemented. With this pause recording capability, there's also a script you can use where when a specific scene is active, it will actually pause recording. I'm not 100% sure how this works yet. I may add in a little bit because I would think if it cuts to the scene, then it will still show up for a second and pause it. But say you need to alt tab to your desktop in order to change something or do something, you can actually switch scenes in OBS and have it pause there, then come back. I'm not, again, I'm, I'm still not super sold on the pause recording thing. So I'm sure you guys will come up with more better useful situations in which it could be used than I will. But it's cool that you have that flexibility. Not only can you pause manually or via hotkeys, but you can do it based on scene selection as well just to give you ultimate flexibility. Another cool feature is the ability in the, in the advanced settings to change OBS's behavior to actually adjust the bit rate kind of on the fly a little bit dynamically whenever you're, you have network congestion instead of dropping frames. Typically, if, your network, you know, if you're streaming fine at say six megabits per second and then your internet speed slows down or you get a bunch of like download traffic through your network or something, you'll just start missing frames and not encoding those frames because it can't, or well, dropping the frames because it can't push them out through your network and gets a little choppy. This option lets you dynamically adjust your bitrate so that it's still sending out all of those frames. They might just be a little bit lower quality while that network congestion is happening, which is really big. So if your sister starts a download on your network while you're live streaming, instead of missing all your frames and getting all choppy, it's just gonna be lower quality until that clears up. Now. This only works for RTMP servers. So if you're using FTL for Mixer, this will not work. And it has been stated that there may be added delay as a result of this when this happens uh, due to the process. But overall, pretty neat. You can also now create custom browser docs within OBS. This has been requested for a while, especially ever since Streamlabs OBS was introduced where they had all the different chat panels and all these different website integrations they introduced streaming service specific ones for Twitch and Mixer and things like that, where you could pull up your Twitch chat and your Twitch profiles, but people wanted the ability to make and add their own for their own different websites or alternate chat options if it wasn't supported natively. And now you can embed pretty much any website, you know, into the OBS framework as you want so that it opens up when you open OBS, which is good for monitoring a lot of things. Like I could see people using it for like their event lists on a alert service or just keeping an eye on things in general. So really cool to see that finally happening. While I'm double checking the change log because I can't keep all of this memorized and I didn't script this video, I happen to look, have YouTube analytics open. Did you know that 60% of you watching this video right now are not subscribed to this channel? Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss more stream guides and streaming education. We do some really cool stuff and I have a cool event coming on Friday that is gonna start some new content that I think you're gonna enjoy. 
click, 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 click the subscribe button. I don't know why I said click so many times. When you're editing the preview canvas and you know moving your sources around, you can finally click and drag and select multiple sources at once within the canvas, kind of like Photoshop or a normal GUI based editor. And then you can move those around based on that. The only thing that OBS is still missing with regards to the canvas layout and things like that, I'm sure there's more, but that specifically would bother me with this new feature is the ability to hit Control Z and undo your changes. Because even when I was just testing this, I ended up moving my sources around. I was like, okay, I don't actually want those moved anymore. And I can't hit Control Z. Streamlabs OBS has introduced this. And given that it's an open source fork of OBS, theoretically the changes that they have made should be able to somewhat be pushed back downstream to OBS. So hopefully they can import that in some capacity that may depend entirely on their new front end though. So. I'm not sure, I've been told undoing, especially in OBS is actually really complicated, but I would like to see that there because at first I was just like, it's not that big of a deal, but now I, I keep running into instances where I really wish I could undo. If you disable your OBS preview, instead of having to right click to enable it in case you do it on accident, I get comments about this a lot. People will be like, I, I don't have a preview, what's going on? They now have a dedicated enable preview button. That's nice to see. Browser sources also, you can now control their audio levels because typically it just sped it out to your speakers and that's what the stream heard and you had no control over it. Browser source audio now has volume levels you can control and you can set it up in audio monitoring, whether it goes out to your speakers through your system sound or whether it just goes to your stream and not you when the audio monitoring settings. And you also have the ability to add filters to the browser source audio as well. So adding that more as a normal audio source, which is really great. A minor back end kind of thing, uh, all of the dependencies that OBS relies on, such as X264, CEF for the browser panels, things like that have been updated. And there are some performance improvements for X264 specifically that have come in the new versions. It takes a little while for programs that use these other you know, pieces of software to really update their dependencies of it. And so OBS using X264 is updated to the latest. So you may actually see improved performance. There's no real way to quantify this at the moment, but for if you use that for one of your encode streams, it may perform better. There's a couple of other little tweaks and bug fixes and things like that. Uh, a couple of, I'm not going to cover them all, but a couple of standouts is if you have less than 50 megabytes of disk space remaining, it will automatically stop recording for you. They added the option to confirm that you like you can toggle this so that it will make you confirm that you want to hit stop recording in case you select it by accident sometimes. And they have finally fixed somewhat hardware accelerated decoding for media sources. Typically this was supposed to be there and wasn't there and now it is there. And this also applies to stinger transitions. So you can, a lot of performance issues people have with OBS relate to stinger transitions and their computer's ability to handle playing back those video files. And this will help that a little bit. However, it's worth keeping in mind, they rely on FFmpeg for their hardware accelerated decoding. And specifically a couple of the modes like maybe CUDA aren't even working at the moment still. But there is still others like DXVA2 runs on NVIDIA cards as well. So there's still options that it will you know, automatically select but there isn't hardware accelerated decoding for most of the formats that support alpha channels in OBS. So if you're using that, you may still have some issues as a result of that. And I've gotten really inconsistent answers when trying to stream, like figure this out because they're not the ones who manage FFmpeg or what is, ex you know, accepted in FFmpeg. But most of the formats that like, for example, the VP9 WebMs with alpha, that's already a hacky workaround to include alpha in the first place. And there is not hardware accelerated decoding on any platform for that, which is why it's kind of a problem to use, even though it's also the most flexible format for OBS. It's a weird situation. I've been trying to figure all this out. Hasn't really worked out yet, but that is one of the fixes is you may see a performance improvement as a result of this finally being actually implemented, even though it said it was there before. And lastly, I just wanted to note the default recording format has finally been changed from that ancient FLV format, which didn't even support multiple audio tracks to MKV, which is really great. Excited to see it. And if you're confused how you're supposed to use MKV because your video editors or media players won't accept it, I have multiple videos on this subject, but go to file, remux and select the file, or you could go to your settings and enable auto remux. So as soon as you hit start recording, it remuxes the file back to an MP4 file. Really cool. I also still wanted to note one more thing. Um, I wanted to note, just because I think people might be looking for this, even though it's not super important. If you don't have any audio tracks selected when recording, it will automatically default to choosing whichever audio track is selected in your streaming settings. So if for whatever reason you wanted to only select the streaming track and you accidentally uncheck them all, it will still be using that one. 
weird scenario, but just wanted to mention it. So go download OBS either through the auto updater in the program itself or on the GitHub, download the installer dedicated itself. Version 24 is here. I am super stoked. Go check it out. Let me know what you think about the update in the comments section down below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more OBS tips, stream guides, and tech education. I'm Box. I'll see you in the next one. Come check us out on Floatplane. You can get early access to videos, behind the scenes content, lots of great stuff. I'll see you over there. We have something really cool coming this Friday, probably tomorrow by the time you're watching this at 3 p.m. Eastern. I'm really excited. Stay tuned.